old. A cute, uh, chubby, curly, blonde-haired bundle of timid. <laughs> Sitting on the rug in Miss O'Rourke's kindergarten class, and that little olive-skinned girl with the telephone cord hair and the orange sliced smile pressed her mouth against mine and pecked me right on the lips. Then she did the same thing to the boy sitting next to me. <laughs> Shrugged her shoulders and walked away. Back then, if you asked me, I'd say that love was like a friendly competition. I'm 10 years old in my granny's house in, in Cape Town, South Africa, on Milnerton Road, when in all the revisited innocence of her old age, my grandmother tells my sister and I that at first, when our parents got married, it was just so that our mother could become a naturalized citizen. She didn't mean to say it like that. It just slipped out, like, like trying to hold a wet bar of secret. And when my sister let out a few audible sniffles, Granny, with all her warmth and sincerity, placed a band-aid over our befuddlement and told us that they have since grown beautifully into their love. Back then, if you asked me, I'd say that love is like a pair of oversized new shoes or a pile of hand-me-down clothes that you hope will fit you one day. I was, I was 19 when I met her. Her eyes were the greeniest, greenest, most piercing shade of fierce that I had ever seen. And once I'd finally mustered up the fortitude to look directly into them, I felt like I'd never want to look away. Two weeks into our time together while sitting face to face in the cramped confines of her little silver car, trying to avoid blinking as to not break the intensity of our gaze while deliberating how to finally say goodnight for the evening when neither of us wanted to, she told me in a whisper, with the seriousness of someone disclosing a medical diagnosis that she felt like she sorta, kinda, wanted to tell me that she loved me. Without hesitation, I told her that I, I kind of sort of thought that I loved her too, and, and we broke up two months later. <laughs> After her so-called ex-boyfriend tried to attack me with one of those post-9-11 American flags on the front porch of her parents' house. <laughs> Back then, if you asked me, I'd say that love was still a competition, just not friendly anymore that it was a cruel game, a heated argument, something that ends before you get a chance to really define it, something that can be hijacked from you while you're in the clouds. Then there was her. The first time she told me she loved me was during sex. And I'm not sure if she said it by her own volition or if I had just like pumped the words from deep down in her womanhood right up and out of her mouth. And after she coveted, after that she, she coveted holding my hand wherever we went. I still remember that day that we walked past a group of people who shared her complexion and she loosened her grip on my hand. I didn't say anything until two months later and she told me that, that just because she let go of my hand didn't mean she doesn't love me. We almost got back together as many times as we broke up, but every single time that we broke up after the veins in our necks descended and our tears dried, she would always insist that we never say goodbye, just later. Back then, if you asked me, I'd say that love is a tight grip, a mutual agreement that it's, it's riddled with stipulations, that it's like a broken mug and, and a bottle of crazy glue, mm. that, that you keep putting it back together every single time that it breaks, hoping that the next time it'll stay whole long enough to hold something warm again. And then there was her, with, with her almond eyes and her wild temper. See, the morning she and I conceived him, our souls, they, they slithered out of our bodies and bled into each other like watercolors soaking into a blank canvas. We loved, competed, survived for three years until, she broke, until the day that she broke out into a hurricane of anger and her gusts of insecurity lifted massive lies right out of her mouth and hurled them all over our studio apartment until our trust was a broken mug lying in pieces on the floor, incapable of ever being whole again, of ever holding something warm again. And he was standing, holding the side of his playpen. His eyes were like two musicians playing the saddest, most beautiful song that I have ever heard. And ever since then, if you ask me what love is, I'll tell you that I don't know, but it's something that you recognize better when you've lost it. Wow.